Million dollar question is, with the takeover, what changes are coming to HISD? It's, it's important to frame this the way the law is structured. I'm not the one leading Houston ISD. What, what we are doing under this intervention is we are choosing nine individuals who are Houstonians who will become the board of managers, and they will assume all the powers and duties of the elected school board. So it'll, it's essentially a shift in local control from the current locally elected board to an appointed board of nine. Um, they then have all the, the, the duties and obligations to govern the school system like any governing body in the state of Texas. So uh, they'll oversee the superintendent, they'll set strategic direction, they set budget. Um, their job as a team is to be focused like a laser on the needs of students above all else. You're replacing the school board? Yes, sir. Are you replacing the superintendent? So the the law that sets this in place says I have to name a school board and I do appoint a superintendent. So uh, we will be, uh, when we take this action, because what we've announced today does not change anything today. What we've announced today is that we're going to start a, uh, a process to solicit members of the community who would serve as individuals that would be on the board. Um, and we think we'll be through with that process on or about June 1st. So that is when we would actually name the board and name the superintendent. In the meantime, the current superintendent, Superintendent House, who's a, a very student-focused ethical leader, is a man of integrity, um, will continue to lead the district with my full support, with the full support of our conservators. Um, uh, so as of today, nothing changes. Um, when we name the board, we'll also name a superintendent at that time. The nine new board members that you select, where are they coming from? What educational experience will they have? So we went through a process similar to this in 2019 before the courts uh, sort intervened, of intervened uh, and kept, kept us on pause for the last three years. But we have a, a very transparent process. So you can go to our website today. We would encourage uh, Houstonians that are um, interested in serving in this way to go and apply. And so we have an open application process. Uh, people provide their you know, resumes, their background, and we go through a, um, a vetting process. We, what we're most interested in is people who start with a core belief that all children can learn and achieve at high levels. And that that, that is possible as long as they're provided effective supports and that they can work together as a team. So you're looking for people, anybody, who's interested in serving education in Houston. Uh, yes, I would, I would say not just anybody. Board service is not for the faint at heart. So these need to be people of integrity and character. They need to have um, uh, their wits about them. They need to recognize that they are, exist not for the district to serve them, but they exist to serve the students and the teachers of, uh, of, of Houston ISD, real servant leaders who understand their role as members of a governing body. Will these new board members, do they have to have an educational background, like have they been teachers? Yeah, we would prefer a really diverse uh, set of professional experiences, life experiences, because uh, uh, only when you have differing perspectives and differing backgrounds at a table can you come together um, and make the best decisions for a very diverse student population. So we would expect some to have teaching backgrounds, but some potentially to have backgrounds in finance, and it, it, what you would want is a, a mix of experiences. Mm. So. You're going to change the superintendent, you're going to change the school board, so what will be different about how you govern than what's already being governed? Yeah, this is, um, this is a great question. People ask us what has been also our track record with boards of managers in uh, the state. So uh, uh, over the last 20 years, there's been seven board of managers placements um, in, to operate school districts for any extended period of time. And uh, in some of those were placed for reasons of, of finance or governance problems in the district, but some of them were placed for academic reasons. For every academic placement, academic outcomes have improved. And in fact, they improved even in the non-academic placements in all but one of those interventions. And that one, it didn't go down. It just remained unchanged because it was there for, uh, for, to correct uh, financial problems. So the, the, what, what the governing body is there to do is to set um, a strategic direction to, to create focus, to make sure that the tone at the top is one of innovation and service towards students above all else, to make sure that they can make decisions related to resource allocation within the school system so that kids at, uh, at every school, not just some schools in Houston, but at every school have access to rigorous extracurricular activities, to advanced uh, coursework, that we can help um, improve the lives of kids regardless of where they are geographically in Houston. And it, in this, it just takes focused leadership. At the end of the day, this is about the, the leadership focus of the governing body to make sure that um, adult interests are secondary to the, to the needs of children. Are you saying that currently you believe that 
adult interests supersede the interests of the children? I, I, let me speak as a former school board member, also in a big city, because I was on the school in board Dallas. Yeah, in Dallas for four and a half years. Um, uh, their uh, school board service is challenging. Um, these are volunteers that say, I, I wish to serve. They uh, 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 go through a process to get elected, and then they have to focus with all of the noise of the city, focus on just what the children need, first and foremost. And uh, ensuring that you stay f focused with laser-like precision on meeting the needs of students and not serving some special interest uh, uh, of adults is actually quite difficult, regardless of the city, regardless of the context. And so um, uh, it, it, you have a lot of good people that have run for office in Houston that, ha that have been on the board, but the board as a governing body has not consistently prioritized the needs of children. Um, if, if it did, then you wouldn't see a decade or more of, of, of low achievement at some campuses that has been allowed because you would, you would see the resource allocation or structures of support um, uh, done to prioritize meeting those needs above all else. Mm. So what are you, what is TEA going to do differently to turn this district around specifically? Like you, you, you're talking in generalities sure. about improving the lives of children. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great question and, and it's one that I can't give you a precise answer for because ultimately TEA is not going to be running this school system. It is going to be governed by that appointed board of managers. So my role... But they're appointed by TEA. That's exactly right. right. My role is to find people of integrity and character and wisdom that can work together as a team. And then they have to study every issue. They have to listen to their friends and neighbors in Houston. They have to uh, listen to teachers and students, hear the reports from the administration and make decisions. And I'm sure they're going to make decisions that I, as an individual, might disagree with from time to time. But ultimately, they're the ones that are going to be closest to the problem. Now, what kinds of changes do, uh, would they make? Um, there's any number of evidence-based interventions that are fairly well understood in the space. So we know, for example, that the teacher in the classroom is the single most important in-school factor that impacts student outcomes. So have we organized the human capital systems of Houston ISD so that there are incentives for our absolute best and brightest educators to work in schools that where they are needed the most. And if what kind of incentive? Uh, well, I mean, any a number of incentives. You, the people work for for financial incentives. They work for recognition. The the kinds of things that you need to put in place to really. Uh, love on those who love on our kids. I mean, this is this is this is the the job, and so making sure that you have um, again the right, I think, systems and structures in place district wide, so that you don't have a situation where one campus could be without the supports or without the resources for as much as a decade, uh, allowing two generations of kids to cycle through without learning how to read, write, and do math and doing it at high levels. This is this is not what we. Um, can allow. Yes, education is challenging and the job that teachers have is the most difficult, difficult job I've ever seen uh, anyone do. But uh, we have got to make sure that where there is an area where a campus is struggling that the district uh, primes into action and uh, works to remedy that as quickly as possible and not letting it languish for five plus years. So we're going to see a board of managers and a new superintendent that is more focused, more determined than what we've seen in the past few years is what you're telling me. The short answer to that question is yes. The short answer is yes, but the, the specifics, because everything you're telling me I've heard for many years in terms of covering education, providing support, et cetera. Do you have any other details about how this is going to work? I mean, the, the, uh, I have a variety of, of uh, insights as to what I've seen work in schools all over the state of Texas. So what, what do you think you will do that will turn this district around? Uh, again, what I am doing specifically is find... Or the board that you appoint and the superintendent that you appoint. So, uh, I mean, I would, again, you're going to have a, a superintendent that's going to build on the, the strategic d uh, plan that uh, Superintendent House has developed and the current board is, and try to improve in areas where uh, it might be weak, build on the strengths. Houston has a lot of strengths in the district. There are huge numbers of kids that are actually doing very well in Houston, and you wouldn't want to see any of that uh, disrupted in any negative way. What you want to see is the, the structures of support. So like some specific examples. We know, f we know that young children learn how to read by learning how to decode the English language. Think phonics. So how well structured is kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, 
um, uh, curricular supports for teachers um, so that so the students have a chance to master their letters, master the sounds of those letters, to sound out words, and to, to learn how to read. So you're saying that they've got to get that down because we know that by the time they get to fourth grade, if they're not proficient, they're in trouble. Of, of course, and you have, again, you have some campuses in Houston that are doing this um, and doing it well, but you also have some campuses in Houston where this is clearly not being done. Um, you have an elementary school in, in Houston ISD, the last time that that school had acceptable performance was in 2011. This is, um, we, you cannot have a situation where uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, uh, students go through without the, the uh, the teachers in that school being given the resources that they need to be successful. And so, sometimes those resources are financial, but sometimes those resources are uh, training and support and uh, professional development. They're, they're curricular in nature. They're the manipulatives that you have, the books that the kids read. You want to make sure that those are designed around an evidence base and that they, uh, they can be deployed and deployed effectively uh, for the benefit of those young people. Why do you think HISD has failed in the areas that you're talking about? It is not, no one intentionally um, allows this t to occur. Everyone who runs for the school board, they want to they help, they want to serve. Uh, you have very talented administrators in the district, very talented teachers, but it is a big system. It is, it is as if this system has a life of its own and without um, some oversight at the top that is specifically trying to redirect the energies of that system so that they can better support kids, you will just continue to see it. Sort of inertia is the most powerful force. So I, I don't impugn the motives. Uh, this, is, um, this is not about uh, blaming individuals. This is about a course correction so that what we give our kids in Houston is the best we possibly can. Some parents told us they like the idea of a democratically elected board instead of people being appointed. And you say, well, I ran for school board uh, in Dallas, so uh, this 200-plus uh, this year experiment in democracy that we have um, is something I'm mighty proud of, as are, I think, most Americans. And so th that is important, but when you think about our republic, we, we, you know, we live in a country that was uh, founded on the principles that speak to the highest ideals of man, that all men are created equal, that we're endowed with certain rights. School, public school in particular, is the deliverer of those rights. It is what equips young Americans to pursue the American dream, to try uh, to fail, to, to, to succeed, to pick themselves up when they fail. And if, if we do not have schools that equip our children with the ability to read, write, and do math and do it at high levels, then uh, we should have grave concerns for the future of our democracy. That, because this is, the, this is the future of the country. So it is, it is critical that schools meet their mission, that they deliver on this promise of the American Republic. Um, and so, yes, uh, uh, we are focused on ensuring we continue uh, to sustain our demo democratically controlled schools. This will be a temporary intervention. It will return back to democratically elected um, uh, governance. But uh, we have got to make sure that we are serving students so that they can be engaged citizens in the republic. How long will this temporary intervention last? It's, uh, it's hard to say with precision. Um, we, uh, one of the things that the law sets up is there's a specific set of criteria that you go through um, uh, before a return to electoral control. There's a specific timeline that's spelled out in law. But, um, uh, a key condition is that whatever circumstances that led to the inter intervention, those circumstances have, have got to be remedied. So if a, if a school was failing, then it has to pass. That's, that's, uh, that's the short version of it, yes. So many years. So what, what I would say is there's three specific exit criteria that we are focused on. One is we want to see no more multi-year DRF campuses in Houston. Period. Failing campus. Uh, yeah, DRF. Year after DRF. Year. DRF yeah, multi year. DRF. Yeah. And it's possible that one year an individual campus has uh, struggles, but we, don't, we do not want to see multi year DRF campuses. Um, we also want to see special education that is operating in compliance with federal and state law. There's a number of special education problems in Houston ISD. Uh, that have got to be remedied. We have got to make sure that we are uh, serving our students uh, with disabilities um, a, a, as effectively as we can. And then the third, the third key criteria is that the, the procedures of the board, the, uh, the, the, the governing body itself, 
is, is being executed with, an, with a focus on student outcomes, not on other things. So these are the three key uh, exit criteria that we're looking for, and once those have been met, then we, um, we, we start the process to transition back to uh, the board, is, board of trustee control. What's your best guess that this is going to change? Well, if you look at, uh, again, there have been seven Board of Managers interventions, and on average. roughly, and they, they range any from two to, to about six years. Hopefully, it'll be as soon as possible. We, don't want, uh, we want this to, 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 to um, incur as, as little time as possible, but we want to make sure that the exit criteria are met. Mm. This takeover idea started because of poor academic performance at Wheatley High School and also some allegations of misconduct among school board members. Wheatley got a passing grade last year. Old board was kicked out, new board came on. So why now? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because um, uh, to the credit of the current board, they're performing better than uh, before. You don't see public acrimony at board meetings. You don't see the same kind of malfeasance. So why replace them? Before. Um, uh, ultimately, the law requires um, the Commissioner of Education, this is a statute, it's not something I have control over. The, the law requires the Commissioner of Education to intervene in one of two ways after any campus reaches five years of, of unacceptable performance. Wheatley High School. Wheatley reached that in 2019. And so this order that is required under law is required because of what occurred in 2019. Mm. We actually issued this order in 2019, but have been stayed by the courts for three years. So what, now that the courts have, have ruled that ultimately the inter intervention was in fact um, uh, fully authorized in 2019, we, I'm constitutionally sworn officer, we now have to proceed with what is mandated under law. Mm. I know what's mandated, but I, a broader question is this. Is it fair to take over a district of 274 schools based on the failure of one school? This is a great question of public policy, and th this is, I think, when you, when you look at why the legislature adopted this law in the first place, it, I think, gets to the, these basic ideals and principles about how education is supposed to work. What if education works for some, but not all? Is that acceptable? Is that something we should simply allow? So if, if failure at Wheatley is happening, then you must come in and take over to ensure that the whole district stays where it needs. The way the law is structured is that um, if a single campus has chronic um, uh, underperformance issues that is not remedied by the district, it is ultimately the responsibility of the school board to solve those problems, and therefore it's ultimately the remedy under state law t to uh, deal with that problem at the school board level. There are some people who think this is going to be a good idea. There are those who do not. Some parents and teachers told us, quote, we just can't walk in and take over a school, especially a school that has made progress. Yeah, that, well, that's, so we, we're not taking over an individual school. What we are doing is appointing a, a new local governing body for the district. Um, and then the, the goal of that governing body is to be laser focused on meeting the needs of students so that there are no more uh, chronically underperforming campuses in Houston. Will there be any layoffs? Uh, what I am ordering has nothing to do with layoffs. What I'm actually ordering is the governing body and the people that are, are then set to oversee the district. Will any schools be closed? Uh, I am not ordering any campus closure. I don't, I don't think that's, the, 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 the law actually would require me either to order a closure of a campus or a board of managers. We're choosing the board of managers route, not a campus closure. If Wheatley has been the problem, what are you going to do to fix Wheatley? Uh, this is ultimately about the structure of supports provided by the district to Wheatley, to the schools that feed into Wheatley. Um, we want to make sure that the kids at Wheatley High School are given the best resources possible. I mean, uh, kids at Wheatley should have access to AP classes and computer science and to one-act play and to debate and all of, the, all of the things, the enriching things that make school uh, great for so many of our kids. Are there teachers at Wheatley? You who will no longer be there after the Board of Managers comes. So again, my order has nothing to do with individual teachers. It's solely focused on the uh, governing body of the district. Now, over time, the governing body of the district has to make decisions. The superintendent, the leadership team of the district has to make decisions. And um, uh, over, t uh, over time, I'm sure they're going to make um, uh, decisions that they think are in the best interest of kids. That's the whole reason that uh, this is happening. I want to be clear about something. Who appoints these Board of Managers? Me. So are they reporting back to you? Yes, so the, it's a good question because what, what, um, what I am tr attempting to do is select people, again, of character and integrity and wisdom 
and put them into a, a position where they can gather all the needed information that they need on a daily, weekly basis and make governing decisions accordingly. So is it possible that a is it possible, Mike, that a board of managers will come in and decide X number of teachers need to go? Uh, you, that's you, their call, not your call. That's, that's correct. And I mean, you can hypothesize just about any uh, future because an ele elected board of trustees is where the buck stops under state law. Um, elected, uh, an appointed board of managers has the exact same authority um, as an elected board of trustees. And so the, the individual decisions that they make from time to time, I, I can't speak to. And in fact, I'm relatively confident from time to time they'll make decisions that I disagree with. But that's, I'm, I'm not putting them there to be automatons. I'm putting them there to use their wisdom and judgment to, to, to govern the district effectively. Mm. And you said this will happen, the board of managers will happen by June? Yeah, our, our, uh, so, so today on our website, people could go to our website and they could begin to apply if they're interested in serving uh, as a member of the Board of Managers. I would encourage anybody that's listening to this broadcast, if you're interested in serving, we, we, we need to hear from you. What's the commitment to the Board of Managers? Is we it have, one year, yeah, two Yeah, years? we have some documents that lay out like roles and responsibilities, job duties. There's a decent amount of hours required. This is uh, all f for no pay. Um, these are volunteer positions. Um, uh, and uh, we, we would want people to be able to commit for the duration of the appointment. Now, we do know life happens, and so if somebody moves or something like that. What's the duration of the appointment? This is your qu earlier question. So um, we want it to last the shortest amount of time possible, but we want those three key criteria to be met before exit. Whoever you select as a board of managers, you want them there until they no longer need it. That's correct. Which could be three years, four years. Yeah, it's, uh, seven yeah it's, uh, I don't think seven seems, because there's not been a board of managers intervention that's taken that long, but, um, but two years is a fairly normal um, duration. One teacher said about this whole notion of a takeover that it's as if their voices don't matter. Uh, I, I, to me, I think this is actually the opposite. This is about making sure that the governing body of the district is devoted first and foremost to meeting the needs of students by serving the educators of the district. And so what kind of structural supports are in place for that teacher today? Uh, our goal is to make sure that the supports that uh, he or she needs are the most effective supports possible so that uh, he or she can be successful with the kids in, in his or her classroom. I wonder, ha have you spoken to any parents at Wheatley? I have, uh, yes. Um, uh, and the, uh, there and is... What are they telling you? There's a whole uh, spectrum of perspectives. Um, uh, but many parents at Wheatley want uh, like, like I, as a parent, want they want the best for their children. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to make sure that their ch their children are being well served in the school. Um, uh, if if that is not happening today, s uh, some of them, um, uh, you know, recognize that uh, support can be improved. Some of them like the experience of, that their kids are getting today. It it, it depends because different parents are having different experiences because every kid experiences school differently. Did you grow up going to public school? I did. You have four kids. Are they in public school? So my two youngest are too young for public school, but my oldest are in public school, yeah. Okay. So you would under, certainly understand a takeover of a district would make parents uncomfortable because they don't know what's coming. Uh, the fear of the unknown makes people uncomfortable in all circumstances. And what we're trying to do today is to just clarify what is happening. Um, we are going through a very transparent selection process to, to find new members of the appointed, for the appointed board, and that board will take place uh, on or soon after June 1st. This is conceptually not all that different than elections that happen every November because new board members come, uh, board members go, and so this is a change in the governing body. Does the Superintendent House know he's being replaced? So uh, uh, I have I try to keep a very open dialogue with Superintendent House. He's been, um, I think, a, a, a phenomenal leader uh, for the district, and I have asked him to serve um, for as long as he continues to be willing to serve as we transition um, to, the board of, you can uh, to the board of managers. Until you can replace him. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, but even um, even when a board of managers is named, to the extent that he is able, that he has a great deal of institutional knowledge and expertise. We want to make sure that we bring that expertise to the, to, the, to the table as long as he's willing. Is he still under contract? Yeah, by the by, the, he has a contract from the uh, uh, current board of trustees, and that it's not like this abrogates those contracts; those stay in place. So he'll be on as long as we don't know how long. 
So we will be naming a new superintendent when we name a, a board of managers, um, but uh, um, uh, uh, he is, he's been a great leader for the district, and, um, but for the fact that we, we would we'd like to create a fresh start, um, I, he is a phenomenal leader. So we want to make sure that we continue to use his talents the best way possible. So you had said you don't think they're going to be, it's not your goal to lay off teachers or to close schools, because closing schools was one of the options, but you decided that you have a board of managers instead. Yes, sir. So Wheatley's not going to be closed. This order does not close Wheatley. It's hard for me to imagine a scenario where Wheatley is closed ever. But it's possible that maybe some teachers will be let go somewhere. The school systems, you know, you've got principals, you've got teachers, you've got um, a, a bunch of leaders. There's, these are professionals. They've got jobs to do. They've got to accomplish their their um, their jobs. And we, we want to make sure that what we are doing with this board of managers appointment is creating the, the best structural support for the employees of, of Houston ISD possible because that then allows them to be most successful with the kids of Houston ISD. You have a difficult challenge ahead. Yes, sir. And people are hopefully will log on and sign up to be one of the appointees, right? I reflect uh, periodically on my own journey to this path. I was a uh, I was a big brother, part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. So did I. Oh, excellent! Um, uh, everybody should be a Big Brother Big Sister, by the way. Uh, imagine how different the world would be if we all took responsibility for one life we didn't have to. Um, but uh, I remember my first little. He was 16. He wanted to apply for a job at Brahms, uh, and uh, his level of literacy was not sufficient to fill out the job application without my help. And you don't know why the Lord puts you on whatever path that you're on. But I remember being struck by that pretty significantly. And I, ran, I sold my software company, ran for the school board, because I never wanted that to happen to another kid in Dallas um, uh, if I had anything to do with it. When I think about people today who are living in Houston who might consider service, um, uh, uh, we have to take this ethos that, uh, you know, if not me, who? If not now, when? If, if, um, if you're an individual of character and distinction and you believe that you have uh, uh, talents to bring to help the kids of Houston and uh, understand the governance role as opposed to management, please apply today.